Hello everyone. In my last video I discussed about a half wave dipole and we also saw how to design it using 4 NEC2 antenna designing tool. Today I am going to discuss about monopole. Monopole is expected to be the half of a dipole. If a dipole is lambda by 2, the monopole should be lambda by 4. How to make a monopole is that let's say we have a dipole and it is something like this that a supply, an alternating supply is fed at the center of a uh, wire or a rod which is split from between and it is equal at both the sides. So to make it a monopole what we will do, we will we'll not use the lower part, yeah, one of the part of the antenna of a dipole. Rather than that what we will do, we will ground the other end of the transmission line and we will use to supply only one of the wires of the transmission line to supply this antenna. This remaining part is will be known as a monopole. If the dipole was lambda by 2, this remaining part will be of the size lambda by 4. So the use of this uh, monopole is at the range of frequency of around 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz. This range of frequency, the, tra the transmission that happens in this range of frequency is known as ground wave propagation. In ground wave propagation, mostly what is done that earth surface which acts as a good conductor in this range of frequency is used to uh, guide our electromagnetic waves. So in doing so what happens that we uh, mount the monopole, a quarter wave monopole perpendicular to the earth surface. So let's say this uh, is the earth surface and this quarter wave monopole is mounted perpendicular to the earth. So what happens that at this range of frequency according to boundary condition if the earth is a good conductor it will support the vertically polarized electric field which is coming out of this antenna, this transmitting antenna. So earth surface is actually not flat but its curvature is very very large. So at a, at a very long distance this electric field will remain somewhat perpendicular but after some time after few kilometers uh, of the range of a big city after that this electric field will become tilted as compared to the surface of the earth. So as it, as it tilts the horizontal the tangential part of the electric field will start absorbing inside this earth surface and slowly the electro electric field will get vanished and it will not having it will not have that much of power. Now uh, how to design a quarter wave monopole obviously it is half of a half wave dipole so everything would be half actually its radiation resistance is also half but the advantage of using a monopole is that its gain is double than a dipole. So let us now jump to the tool for NEC2 and uh, design a quarter wave monopole. Before starting to design a quarter wave monopole using the 4 NEC2 tool, uh, let us go through with some calculations. Uh, if you remember the formula for designing a half wave dipole was length plus dia is equals to 0 0.24 lambda. As you can see here the formula for quarter wave monopole is just half of the complete formula of dipole. In place of the complete length of dipole it is h which is half of the length and it is the length of the monopole. R is the radius rather than using diameter we are using here radius and in place of 0 0.48 here we are using 0 0.24 lambda. So this is the final formula that we are going to use. The resonant frequency for which we are designing a monopole is 300 megahertz and the corresponding wavelength which will come for 300 megahertz is 1 meter. Let us take the radius of this monopole be 1 centimeter. Now if you keep all these values in the formula above, we will get h is equal to 0 0.23 meter where h is the height of the monopole. Now let's see this three dimensional coordinate system in which we can see that the monopole is starting from the base 
to the tip the base is touching x y plane and the tip is at the coordinate x2 y2 and z2 now to start from the x y plane we need to keep the coordinates x1 y1 and z1 as 0 0 0 and the topmost coordinate should be 0 0 h where h is the height of the antenna it will make our antenna of 0 0.23 meters starting from x y plane to uh, to the tip which is 0 0 h Okay, let us now start designing a quarter wave monopole antenna. I have started 4 in EC2 and uh, now let us start the, open the editor. Uh, just click on this icon. Yeah, uh, right now some previous file is open so I'll, ha I'll uh, rename it and turn, open the new file and uh, Okay, in the geometry tab, now before uh, clicking on the geometry tab, let's go to the symbol tab and we'll enter all the symbols, all the denotions that we have uh, decided for our monopole antenna. The first thing is the length of the monopole antenna, let us name it H. H is equals to um, 0 0.23 meters and the radius that we decided was 0 0.0 one meter okay now coming to geometry tab um, we we'll select wire the tag uh, name is again as I told you it's just a, uh, identifier for the antenna structure number of segments as I already told you in the previous uh, video that uh, in a dipole because we need to feed the dipole at the center we have to uh, give the number of segments as the odd number in monopole it is not that much necessary but still I am giving the number of segments as 11 and uh, we have just decided that the monopole will start from the base uh, plane that is xy plane so in xy plane at the origin the coordinate will be 0 y will be 0 and z also will be 0 and x2 y2 z2 are the last end coordinate of the monopole so it will be 0 0 and because our antenna is placed on the z axis so z2 will be h radius we have already seen the radius should be smaller now coming to the next tab which is source load since it's a monopole and a monopole is always fed at one of the edges of the antenna not at the center as it was with the dipole so we'll again name give it a name tag 1 segment see the the segments in which we have divided our monopole were 11 segments the number of segments were 11 and uh, the starting segment is named as 1 and we know the starting coordinate was 0 0 0 and the ending coordinate was 0 0 h so the first segment will be near 0 0 0 and that 0 0 0 is x y plane so we'll key, uh, we'll put the segment number as 1 it will make this feed at the lower edge of the antenna then let us take the voltage supply as 1 volt and uh, we need zero phase so we'll put imaginary as 0 so magnitude of the voltage is 1 and the phase is 0 and uh, let's go to the frequency ground tab um, since we have decided to make this antenna for 300 megahertz I'll put here 300 megahertz and now this antenna is perpendicular to the ground so uh, and we have decided that we'll put perfect ground beneath the antenna because if we won't put perfect ground the all the radiation will be absorbed and uh, hindered by that ground uh, by that imperfect ground so there are many options other than perfect ground but right now we are choosing only perfect ground so that our radiation pattern is supported by the earth this check mark connect the wires to uh, for z equals to zero to ground is necessary why because among our two wires of the transmission line, transmission line one of them is grounded so we need to check this option and uh, then no other thing is left so we'll save it uh, we'll, let's save it with some meaningful name I'll do save as in this one let's name it as mono pole okay. So just yeah it's saved now run this uh, NEC simulator by clicking on this button 
this option will come generate f7 is also the shortcut for getting this window and uh, let's select frequency sweep directly and frequency sweep is again between 290 to 310 which will give our 300 megahertz at the center uh, just press generate this will give us uh, two output windows see this output window is the radiation pattern as I already have shown you in uh, a dipole experiment in my previous video so this is also same but you can see here because the antenna is vertically somewhere here and it is above the ground and because the ground is acting as a perfect conductor so ground will not at all uh, take any radiations it will reflect all the radiations so all the radiation pattern and uh, the electromagnetic waves that are coming out of the antenna are just above the ground they are not getting inside the ground and uh, there are few options that I want to tell you this time is uh, you can press J I and G these three uh, options will these three buttons will turn on the marker for half power beam width it will also mark the maxima of the radiation pattern so now coming to the other output this output shows you VSWR this blue graph this red one is showing us reflection coefficient it is uh, way below minus 10 dB so our antenna is having a decent bandwidth and uh, let's switch to the towards gain and uh, we can see that in this gain graph yeah, the, the gain that we are getting is 5.16 dB you can look at it here so uh, if you remember the dipole had the gain of 2.12 dB something so you can see that uh, a monopole is giving just the double gain as I have told you that uh, actually when you put a monopole perpendicularly just above the ground an image is formed just beneath the uh, surface of the earth and the image antenna and the actual antenna their radiation patterns together they combine at the point of observation and they double the intensity of radiation pattern so that is why a monopole being a half length being half of the length of a dipole it gives us double gain so wherever a linear antenna is required wherever it is to be installed near the earth always a monopole is preferred but again the monopole is uh, placed near to the ground only at the frequency range between 300 kilohertz to uh, 3 megahertz all other frequencies at the, at the other frequencies above and below these frequencies the earth will not act as a uh, supporting medium for electromagnetic waves so other uh, provisions has to be done so we'll discuss them afterwards if we have time okay then uh, I'll expect you all to follow this video and try making a monopole antenna by yourself and uh, also by looking at my previous video of dipole try making the dipole as well I'll soon come with a new video thank you